That's a good girl. A good little adventure puppy. All right, ready? Go see Mama. Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent, here in front of Hayden Creek, a tributary to the Arkansas River, to tell you all about Confluent Platform 6.0. Confluent Platform 6.0 is, as they say, action-packed. And there's kind of a unifying theme to some of these things I'm gonna be talking about. You may have heard us talking about a thing called Project Metamorphosis in the past few months. Project Metamorphosis is, is kind of our vision of what event streaming in the cloud ought to be. If you look at a mature event streaming platform, such as Confluent Cloud is becoming, and then you look at a truly cloud-native system, you put those things together and you get really something where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. It's not just, here's a bunch of nice features, but you really get something that we think is transformative. Uh, and when we talk about Project Metamorphosis, it's usually cloud first. It's we're talking about our, our cloud service and not Confluent Platform. But in 6.0, a lot of those features are starting to come to Confluent Platform. So if you run on-prem, you start to benefit from these things too. It's pretty exciting. And as I'm recording this in August of 2020, there are four metamorphosis themes that we've unveiled so far, and those all participate in 6.0 one way or the other. Those are elastic, cost-effective, infinite, and global. And we'll dive into each one of those more as I touch on the related features. All right, let's start with tiered storage. This is super cool. Now, you're running Confluent Platform and you write something into a topic, and that's stored durably, potentially forever, for whatever your retention period is. Stored where though? Sometimes you actually have to remind yourself that it gets stored on, in the simplest form, a disk that's owned by a broker. And of course, several brokers, there's replication happening, but it's written to local disk. And I know in your deployment, there could be all kinds of complex things. Maybe you're running in the cloud and that's an EBS volume that's attached, it, right? There's all kinds of qualifiers here, but bottom line, there is something that looks like disk to the system that's running that Kafka broker. And traditionally, that's where topics are stored, log files on disk, right? Tiered storage now gives us the option of deploying a lower cost secondary tier of storage. So you have, say, your newest data that's newer than some certain threshold that's still on those, we'll call them local disks for purposes of simplicity. Uh, and the data that's older than that threshold will get written to this other lower cost store. Think of it like a cloud blob store. And you know, in general, the lingua franca of blob stores is the Amazon S3 API. All of them are basically compatible with that. There's various on-prem blob store solutions that you can deploy that still look like S3 to the outside world. So something like an S3 blob store uh, is that secondary tier, and then the rest of it is still on local broker storage. So you got a few things there. You got effectively infinite storage. And you know, infinite, of course, is a touchy word. There's still only so many hard disks in the physical universe that we're aware of, but you know, we round off. I mean, in photography, infinity is 20 feet. So just give me this one. It's basically infinite storage, right? You don't have to deploy more brokers to get more storage. You have a farm of disks. You have S3, you have Google Blob Store. You have something like that where you're really not gonna fill it up. Uh, also, you have reduced infrastructure costs. Now, Kafka brokers can get pretty big in terms of the disks you can stuff into them, but you're still being a broker. Right? There's still, it's a Confluent Platform node, it's, there's a machine, there's, there's all that sort of infrastructure cost associated with that. And you'd rather be able to now make a disk farm. And that storage is, as we know, at a much lower cost per byte uh, when it lives off in a blob store. So you get much cheaper infrastructure costs for all of that data. You also have more elasticity, right? If you're storing things for a longer period of time, you don't have to worry about deploying more brokers. You could just grow your blob store usage. And if that is a cloud blob store, then that is truly elastic, right? You don't think about that scaling. You're not thinking about deploying the servers that babysit the disks or managing the, anything like that. It's just kind of a, as they used to say, crunch all you want, we'll make more. So you get a little bit more elasticity there in your deployment. Next up, self-balancing clusters. Now, let's just remind ourselves what a Confluent Platform cluster is. And again, let's just use some simplifying terms. It's a bunch of computers that are connected together that have disks on them. And what gets stored on those disks? Well, topics, specifically topic partitions. And those partitions are distributed among the nodes in the cluster. Now, when I add a node to the cluster, which is a good thing, right? This is a scalable system, I can do that. Uh, by default, if you're just thinking about Apache Kafka, 
and I add a node to that Kafka cluster, that's great. When I create new topics, it's available for partitions to be assigned to it. It's going to participate in the life of the cluster. But all of the data I had on, say, the first three, it does not magically get reassigned to that new node. I can do that, right? There's a way to manually do that, but that's kind of a bummer. Self-balancing clusters in Confluent Platform 6 is a way of making that happen automatically. And that manual rebalance process is an included Apache Kafka command, right? Like you can, people do this in the real world. It's just a manual step. And you got to write a little bit of JSON, think about what partition is going to go where, run it. And, you know, I don't exactly get out of bed in the morning thinking I want to write JSON config files. I, I get out of bed in the morning thinking I want to write YAML config files, and I know you do too. But uh, honestly, this works, but it's very manual, and there's just a lot to do. So uh, with 6.0, now this is an automated process. I click self-balancing in Control Center, and away I go. Confluent Platform 6.0 includes KSQL DB 0 0.10. Uh, CP is, as usual, keeping pace with the rapid development of KSQL DB. Some cool new features in 0.10 include pull queries. Now, it's kind of funny, I've been talking about pull queries for almost a year now, but they've been a preview feature. They are now GA, they're generally available in 0.10, therefore in Confluent Platform 6.0. And what a pull query is, is when I create a table in KSQL, say there's some stream and I group by a key and aggregate, that, that forms a table, right? There's a key and then a value, that's, that's my, the ag output of my aggregate function. Uh, that table, is queryable by key. That's what a pull query is. It's like a regular database query. Now, in this streaming database, we've got the ability to do that same thing. Embedded Kafka Connect is now also a generally available feature. It's a thing we've been talking about since about last fall, but it's been in preview and it's there for you now. So now you can, with a create connector statement, actually spin up a Kafka Connect connector. And that can be in the embedded Connect instance inside KSQL DB itself, or if you're already running Connect standalone, you've already got a Connect cluster, you could say, hey, KSQL, I want you to use that Connect cluster that I'm already administering and loving and caring for, and I just get to configure it by, with SQL rather than posting pieces of JSON to the REST API. Again, much cooler to write some SQL than to write a piece of JSON config. And I don't want you to miss the significance of these two features becoming generally available things. I mean, honestly, step back and look at it. To build a streaming application with the current tools, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, there are several distributed systems that you have to stand up and manage. And pretty much zero people want that, right? If you want to just make the application work, you didn't also want to use six different distributed systems to make it happen. So the more functionality KSQL DB integrates within itself, like this Connect integration, for example, uh, and, and, well, it's native stream processing capability, that's kind of two distributed systems that just get checked off the list right there. So it's a really important thing. And as KSQL DB grows, I think you're going to find it becomes more and more your go-to for how you get stream processing done uh, as it lets you kind of cross off more and more distributed systems elsewhere in your system that you don't have to operate. And probably, as I said, didn't wake up this morning aspiring to operate. Confluent Platform has also grown some new REST admin APIs. This is tremendously good news for the scripting and automation that you want to probably do. And uh, up to now, this has been a little bit of a mix and match of different things like maybe this thing I have to do through this command line tool, this thing I have to do through Control Center, maybe this thing had an API, but bringing more and more of that into uh, documented REST APIs so that there's a uniform and scriptable and automated way to get this stuff done. Uh, this doesn't make Control Center an unimportant part of your life. If you're a Confluent Platform user, you're still really going to want to use Control Center. It's the purpose-built admin and monitoring application for Confluent Platform, and there's all kinds of great things about it. But you also want to automate things. Uh, we are adults. We would like a REST API, and increasingly, there is a better and better REST API with every release of Confluent Platform. What can you actually do? Well, here are a few things. I can describe, list, configure brokers, create, delete, describe, list topics, uh, delete and describe and list consumer groups. Can't create a consumer group, of course. To create a new consumer group, you have to deploy a new consumer group, but I, I can look at them and that's a good thing. Same thing, basic CRUD operations on ACLs, and I can also take a look at partition reassignments, all the kinds of stuff that you're gonna wanna do all in the REST API. We have a new preview feature, which is cluster linking. And this is really, really important. Now, 
Traditionally, when you want to deploy one Confluent Platform cluster in one place and another in another. So these could be different regions in your cloud provider. These could be different physical data centers of yours, maybe a physical data center of yours and a cloud provider. Whatever that story is, uh, they're not all in the same data center with a low latency, uh, high availability connection between them. Historically, to do that, you use Kafka Connect, right? Uh, you stand up a Connect cluster and uh, Connect will consume from one topic that you want to replicate in another data center and then produce it there. So two downsides to that. One is now I have to think about that Connect cluster or that connector in that Connect cluster. It's just an extra moving piece to babysit. The other downside is topic offsets, right? If I'm consuming from one data center and producing to another, that topic over there, presumably I would like applications over there to be able to like use it. Uh, and, or maybe I have an application that's in uh, some third place that I want to be able to consume from this data center and then produce to the other. I'm assuming those topics are the same. If the offsets are different, it's difficult to fail over from one data center to the other. So getting offsets to match is a classical problem in this approach. With cluster linking now, this is running at the broker level. This is running in what we call Confluent Server, the broker in Confluent Platform. Uh, and it's happening at the broker level, this linking of one cluster to another with offsets preserved as those topics are linked between clusters. You've got much stronger guarantees about whether messages have been consumed and consumed only once, all that kind of stuff. and basically simplifies your thinking about hybrid cloud and multi-cloud deployments and really just multi, what I like to call multi data center deployments in general. And of course, Confluent Platform always gives you the most recent version of Apache Kafka. In this case, that's 2.6. So if you want to know about 2.6, you want to check out the blog post on the Confluent blog. That's all about Apache Kafka 2.6. Uh, there's another video where I'm talking about some of those features in detail that's in front of a different stream elsewhere in Colorado. So be sure and check that out. So there you go. You've got tiered storage, game-changing feature, if I may use that somewhat cliched term. It really is, I think you'll find, for what you can do. KSQL DB 0.10, some cool new stuff becoming generally available there, and a preview of cluster linking. You want to start using that if you are doing any kind of hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, multi-DC deployment. Get your hands on it. You really want to start using that now because it's going to be the way this gets done in the future. So get busy, download it now, check these features out, as always, we would love to hear from you in community Slack, on Twitter. Always want to know what you're building and hear those stories. Thanks a lot.